Hey, how's it going? It's uh, time to look back at the history of icons. So for the next couple of weeks, uh, Pedro and I are gonna work pretty hard to dig through the old files and show you what we've been up to. Tonight, we're gonna to focus on the Icon Thriftmaster. So it's based on the 47 to 53 Chevrolet pickup with the occasional 54 and the occasional GMC. Uh, we build these in three different styles, the derelict style, the old school style, and the new school style. As with all Icon models, we start with new schools so that we define a distinct style that helps people understand that our engineering approach is quite different from the traditions. So we went from uh, new school, then we went into old school, then we've had the opportunity to build a series of the derelict ones, my personal favorites. So check it out. Here's the history of what we've built to date, and we appreciate your time and attention. We started the Icon brand because I wanted a brand that was simply classic transportation design revisited in a modern context. So getting away from the archaic mechanical experience, but staying with the romance of the vintage aesthetic, but then infuse it with all the best engineering and state-of-the-art stuff to kind of transcend it from how you'd interface with a traditional classic. Starting at the very top, the very first one that we built was a 1951 five window. It was built, of course, in the new school style. This is back in 2013, early 2014. We did it in a satin gray color with the brushed satin nickel trim. I played with doing red infill on the badges on this one. I don't think I ever repeated that. It was too bling bling. We did our uh, favorite black bison interior. Bedwood was done in Louisville Slugger Ash Wood. We did a low stance. This is uh, the solid rear axle four link and independent front with the old 5.3 E-Rod, which we uh, put a good old fashioned Magnuson supercharger on there to give it a little extra boom. Transmission was the ever epic and burly 4L85E automatic. And this has the old school design based what we call pie pan wheels uh, on the Thriftmaster series. Well, in this video, I kind of want to tell the story of how we get from a crusty old beast such as this derelict 1950 Chevy 3100 five window to the newest icon, the Icon Thriftmaster. If I had to pick a single element, these armrests are my favorite thing on the whole truck. I've been on kind of a Raymond Lowy kick lately and uh, I kind of put myself in his shoes. Um, this project was just, just a blast to work on. For the seat, we worked with Glide Engineering and then we refit Tempur-Pedic foam and that is American Bison hide. And then I redesigned all the hardware as you see here, which again is CNC and aluminum. For the gauges, we co-developed the gauges with our good friends at Dakota Digital who told me as long as I don't screw with the circuit board, the world is my oyster when it comes to indices, colors, fonts, and uh, there you see what we did. The dash is an incredible bit of mechanical engineering. Ferro tracked the dash, get it into CAD so we could control it. We went with the extruded runners there for the tailgate. So here's a little bit of uh, track time. Uh, this is the autocross event, which was good, good, good fun. Got to show off the Willwood brakes and show them uh, pickup trucks ain't just for hauling. Number two, number two was a 1949 five window. This was also built in the new school style, satin black finish, satin brush nickel, medium stance chassis versus you may have noticed number one was pretty darn slammed. Number two also featured the black bison interior and quarter sawn white oak in the bed. Also ran the 5.3 E-Rod with the Magnuson Supercharger automatic tranny and the pie pan wheels. Over the years with Icon, the five window was always in the back of my mind. And one day I decided, after speaking to Craig Morrison at Art Morrison, our chassis partner, discovering that he also loved this truck, 
Uh, he and I s decided to move forward and uh, we started with Craig's personal truck, which has become quite famous. And he did all the chassis engineering, so it made my life easy. For wheels, we're running 18 inch, they're 6061 CNC one piece billet. And then you notice on the hubcaps, those are acid etched spun stainless that again we nickel plate after the acid etch. You stomp it and it is gone. I'd say this truck's probably dynoing at the wheels about 440 horse. Whatever exactly it is, if it had one more horsepower, it would not hook up. As eke out in a different way in the bed. So this time we're running conventional style stainless runners and we used old growth quarter sawn white oak, one of my favorites. Kind of a very traditional American furniture maker favorite wood. The panel in front of the audio system and then that door articulates down on gas shocks. Also on the tailgate, we got rid of those gacky chains. These stock trucks have chains that just go ka -ka 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 constantly beat the piss out of the paint too. So we went to a stainless elbow hinge and then we have uh, hidden on the blind side uh, knurled latches. So you just finger actuate that on both sides and the tailgate rotates down. Number three, 1947 five window this time. This was new school style, satin charcoal finish with brown bison interior. For the bed wood, we used a really hard hardwood out of Brazil known as Ipe. We did a lower stance, again, 5.3 E-Rod with the Magnuson Supercharger, 4L85E Auto, and uh, pie pan wheels. We also call it the TR, so there's a little bit more synergy with the BR and the FJ and our other production models, but Thriftmaster is the right proper name. Um, let's see, what can I tell you? So basically we take 1947 to 53 Chevy 3100 Thriftmaster five window pickups. And in the truck this time we did the brown, same with the Alcantara headliner and the carpet to match the paint in the wood. So it has a really nice kind of monochromatic velvety brown situation going on, which I really like. I'm going to talk about the drivetrain a little bit. Um, fun, fun, fun. So we are running a General Motors Chevy Performance E-Rod, which is the 5.3 LM4. And then to have just a bit more fun. We added the Magnuson uh, superchargers. In the front, we tried to play with the stock one, but decided to just start over again, did our own. It's pretty simple form, painted insets, CNC aluminum, brush nickel plated, and then the lizard on there is pretty notable. Number four, 1952 New School Style. Ferrari Grigio Silverstone uh, set in the paint finish, uh, black bison interior and sapel wood, 6-2 E-Rod automatic medium stance pie pan wheels. Naturally aspirated LS3, tons of power, tons of fun. It'll chirp the tires all the way through to fourth gear if you're laying on it, but it's still nice and docile and has really good manners until you stomp on it. mean serious business when you slam it you're coming to a stop we use 47 to 53s it just depends on what we're lucky enough to find roll wipers and headlights are located under dash uh, we fabricate that drop down piece and that handles lights, wiper, fan, temp. Number five, a 1951 five window Thriftmaster 3100. This one was painted in frozen bronze color, really lovely color, slightly brown hue. 
We borrowed that from our friends at BMW. Satin nickel trim, brown bison interior, 6.2 E-Rod. Uh, higher stance uh, for the chassis and uh, automatic tranny, black walnut bed and pie pan wheels. I used to do them dead stock and I don't know, at least in my humble opinion, the brakes suck, the steering suck, the power suck, the ride suck, but they look so cool. So we worked long and hard to engineer this system that you see now. So to the left of the gauges, you will find a singular AC vent, but that starts the lines with this cool fluted kind of streamlined modern design. Six was a 1951 built in the new school style. This time we did a lovely dark green gloss finish. For contrast, we did a natural vegetable tanned bison interior, which looked really cool, and chrome finish on the exterior trim. The bed, this was the first time we played with the traditional Japanese wood finishing technique called shushugiban. But just to add a little American twist, uh, we did that process to quarter sawn white oak, which I don't think was ever been really done before. Again, still rolling the pie pan wheels. I don't like them too low. You know, we leave it up to the client and we have maybe, what, three, four inches of control over ride height. This one's tall. We just figured out how to do them even taller. In fact, the Thriftmaster derelict we're going to be building will be that new height. But this one to me is a nice balance of retro and performance. And the ever so important mandate of the front bumper is tall enough not to hit US regulation parking berms. You know, those annoying stoppers, the best of their front independent suspension, which was not the previous norms. The Sport IFS is integrated in this truck, I love it. And then on this truck, we did the four link rear. Number seven, this was the first derelict version we had an opportunity to do, as well as the first GMC. It is a 1949. We did the taller stance again, which we see is more and more popular for the Thriftmasters. And a 6.2 E-Rod Auto, really cool detail on this one. You'll notice that stock radio in the dash, which we modified to be a Bluetooth Dependent. The sound system interface, but you kept that stock visual. Man, those stereos are hard to find. I wish we could do more of those. The interior leather was lovely, made in Chicago, Horween Eclipse. It's kind of a dark blue, almost black. Uh, salvaged maple wood in the bed from an old barn. And again, pie pan wheels. But the patina on this one was just so perfect that we knew immediately when we found it, that's what we needed to do. So did our client. In fact, he commissioned it. In fact, all the way back to he commissioned the hunt for it. So the dash, we actually used the original gauges that came to us with this barn find truck, or actually barn find, then garage find, then Craigslist, whatever. So they keep... And this is the first derelict to feature the Icon Brembo brakes, which I'm super excited about. Then there's number eight, 1952 Chevy New School. This one's in a very nice traditional non-metallic dark blue. We did a black pebble grain leather and we did satin nickel on the trim. Of all the crazy bed woods we have done over the years, this is certainly the nuttiest. No joke, no exaggeration, 5,000 year old carbon date certified black oak that was dredged out of a bog in Ireland. Seriously. This one had monstrous power running the General Motors SLA with a six speed toss stance. This was the first time we had the opportunity to evolve to the independent suspension chassis, four wheel independent that is. And this is also the first truck marking my design of the artillery wheels, which were inspired by the 1930s Chevy wheels, but they have a really cool kind of retro vibe to it. This one has a bunch of unique traits. If you're familiar with the model, you'll know that in general terms, they kind of all come the same way as far as options and equipments. This is from our buddies at Relicate. 
Relicate's really fun to work with because I'm able to be very precise about everything from the grain texture to the pull up, to the temper, to the thickness, to how black is black. <laughs> oh jeez, that's just too much fun. Number nine is a 1954, another unique GMC, this time a three window. We finished this in a really nice uh, sky blue finish in the new school style. We did a smooth, low impact grain black leather, maple wood in the bed, traditional chrome trim, another 6.2 E-Rod with full emissions, automatic tranny, and again, our beloved four-wheel independent chassis, pie pan wheels, tall stance. It's funny, I bet you we never do another Thriftmaster without the four-wheel independent, although it does add a fair amount of cost. It, this scale of cost, I don't think it really matters, and it makes such a difference that, um, I don't know, man, once you, once you drive one with a four-wheel independent, you never go back. Like, it's just nice and tight. So this one's a 54, which we've never done before. It's also a three-window, which is kind of cool. The three windows, the cabs look really cool, but the visibility is quite limited. When you go this way or to that lane, you got this big old blind spot, but they still, they look so neat. The dash, I felt these were just a little bit more subtle. So they have a black enamel infill, but the design is following the original design of what originally was a plastic knob with a little steel stamped thingamajigger on top. You've got lights and wipers to the left of the gauges. One totally unnecessary and copious burnout. <laughs> Number 10 was a real special moment for us. I've been wanting to launch an old school edition version of the Thriftmaster. And in this case, it was actually a, a close friend of mine who gave us the opportunity to build it for him. So this was the first design featuring old school. We did it in the two-tone body configuration. We have a couple different ways you can do that on the configurator, but this is my favorite. We did it in this lovely cream and sage green. We did uh, Morin Giles glove leather, which has had wonderful pull-up and surface character. We did quarter sawn white oak in a light finish, traditional chrome trim. Of course, the 6.2 E-Rod, automatic tranny, tall stance, four-wheel independent chassis, and artillery wheels. Into it. Up here in the front, other details unique to the old school edition, obviously chrome and stainless and a lot of chrome and stainless. Side tuck and roll design to give it that vintage vibe and to kind of reference the original pattern of the stock ones. Gauges, really fun opportunity. So the illumination on these is just so cool and they did a really clever job of integrating the tachometers. The same indicators for speed, but with this inner ring. So the orange indicates the red line, which is obviously programmable. And then check it out. We have the hidden latch. So what's cool about it is just shut it and it's shut. No chains, so no rattle, no nonsense. And then here on the inside, you push and drop from this single actuator that actuates both of the bear claw latches on each side. Number 11 is a 1952 new school style, light blue gloss paint, Brompton distressed brown leather, again from our friends at Moore and Giles, walnut bed, I really like the Look at the walnut and the grain variances. 6.2 E-Rod, 6-speed tranny, tall stance, four-wheel independent, and pie pan wheels. It's breathtaking, like the handle's so good. I mean, you're really gonna be sliding around on the seat before the tires are even close to complaining. The performance is outstanding. I mean, it's literally a modern sports car masquerading as a 40s, 50s pickup. The kind of chocolate leather 
that is going to age just magnificently and has a really nice feel to the touch. But it's not too slippery like a lot of waxy leathers can be, so you're not sliding around on the seat. It keeps you nice and anchored. These seat recline hardware, door handles, window regulators on this truck, again, for consistency, are all chrome plated. Number 12 is a 1951. This one we did in a really nice green gloss metallic, it's super dark green, almost looks black. In fact, it's named Midnight Green. More in Giles green leather done custom to pick up the tones and character of that paint finish. Traditional chrome trim, medium stain, white oak bed, 6.2 E-Rod, automatic, tall stance, four-wheel independent chassis. Today, my friends, today we are in yet another Icon TR or Thriftmaster. This is a 1951 and it is Icon TR number 12. This one built in the new school style. Nice. The dash is a really classic layout, as does the steering wheel. Steering wheel is totally incorrect. In fact, it's supposed to be on a 55 to 57 Chevy Bel Air, but we like it because nice and clean, unbranded, and it's reduced diameter. So it just marries really nicely with our rack and pinion power steering and gives you more gut and leg room as well because these cabs are a little bit small. Of course, the seats manufactured here in California by our buddies at Glide Engineering. There's four pins and those pins are removable and are really convenient for cargo hold downs and they kind of are in keeping with the general style of the truck too. Number 13. Number 13 has ghosted us all from this video. Uh, I've been trying to reach out to the client, can't get him uh, to answer an email or phone call. He's paid his deposit, the truck's here. We're really looking forward to the build because it is uh, a suburban version, which is quite rare. So we're hoping to get on to that probably next year. Number 14 is a 1954. You can tell by that unique front clip. We finished this one in the new school style. Paint is Ferrari Nero Gloss Black. More in Giles Black Burnham Leather, traditional chrome finish in keeping with the black on black situation. We yet again did a Shugiban a finished a quarter son a white oak bed. This one's running the 6.2 E-Rod, automatic, tall stance, four-wheel independent chassis, and the pie pan wheels yet again. This vehicle was already owned by the client who commissioned the build, and he has a good amount of sentimental history with it. So we were happy to use his truck. It had wonderful integrity, so it worked out really well. And the 54 is the most obvious difference is the unique grill, which was used in 5.4 only. And for from what I understand, about the first three months of 55 before they had the new body series ready. I'd like to build one of those too. Um, but the client really liked the dash of pre-54. So we took a really crappy cabin that we had and stole its 50 dash and we laced it into the 54 dash. So some of the 54 elements remain, such as the Chevrolet stamped script, the more arched bow to the dash line, the one piece curved windshield of course remains. Number 15, this one is a 1948, a five window finished in yet another Ferrari color. I do find I like a lot of the Ferrari colors, specifically Ferrari Grigio Silverstone in a gloss finish. We did a really nice, unique Morin Giles weathered gray leather interior, traditional chrome trim, teak wood for the bed, which is quite nice and quite durable. I'm curious how that's aged. I should reach out to the client. I think uh, teak reacts to the sun, but in generally a really cool way. 6.2 E-Rod, 6-speed manual, tall stance, four-wheel independent, chassis, you guessed it, pie pan wheels. Reverse lights to fit in there nice and snug. It's a nice, nice little bonus bit. The bed wood on this one's pretty cool. It's actually teak, so it's got a really nice look to it and it should age beautifully. We stained it and finished it in a satin finish. So just not in your face blingy bling, but just kind of cool and classic. Of course, all stainless steel hardware for that. 
You've also got the uh, in-bed fuel filler. And on this truck, let me see. Yeah, we did not do the cargo hold downs on this one. Um, moving into the interior, really nice leather, got great surface character. It actually looks like a suede new buck, but it's not. It's like the surface is slightly. Number 16 is a 1952 five window. This one has a, some really cool trim and um, I really like this. I mean, I don't know, I like them all, but we painted this one in uh, Porsche's chalk finish uh, paint gloss. Uh, new school style, obviously. Uh, Burnham suede leather interior. Black chrome trim, which is kind of hard to pick up on the video, but it's cool and just slightly not what you expect. It has a really cool vibe to it. Shoe a Shugiban finished walnut species bed this time. Another manual tranny, yay, 6.2 E-Rod, 6-speed, tall stance, four-wheel independent chassis, and artillery wheels. On the driver's side, does have the top center cowl vent, which is nifty and works really good. And uh, this truck has some really kind of neat, subtle, well, I guess some aren't that subtle, but like stylistically, it's a bit more menacing than the usual. So probably it's this gray-black situation and a lot of times everyone gives me credit for everything and it's frankly already self-aggrandizing enough to found a brand but I, I, I'm just the idiot who comes up with all the crazy ideas and then I have an incredible dedicated team in house plus our sublet supplier partners and that typeface continues on the exterior for the Thriftmaster badging and the acid edged new school style branding uh, on the tailgate. Hubcaps are also acid etched, but with a black chrome, it makes it even subtler than the usual. Number 17, yet another ghost. Still remains a mystery. The client asked us to press pause and proceed with some other builds. So we're going to reach out to him soon and see if he wants to get back in queue or not. So we'll move right along to number 18. Number 18 was a 52 again five window Chevy. This was another derelict, which we were, uh, we love building the derelicts. Brown bison interior. Uh, we broke out from tradition when it comes to derelict finishes and honored the client's request to have the interior fully restored, repainted and refinished. Uh, some just magnificent reclaimed barn wood in the bed. Six two E rods, six speed, tall stance, four wheel independent chassis, pie pan wheels. Today, we are in Icon Riftmaster number 18. This particular truck is a 1951, and it's built in the derelict style. So much fun. In pan, baked on, but surprisingly stable. Really good body integrity. No notable rust at all. So that means four-wheel independent suspension. Dana Nodular 60, third member, rear steer capability of about three to four degrees if you're really pushing it, and uh, independent front, Icon Brembo brakes, hydro boosted all the way around. Number 19 is a 1953, yet again another derelict. This one has a unique weathered brown leather interior. We did new satin finish marine poly walnut in the bed. Six to E rod, a six speed manual, yay. Tall stance, four wheel independent suspension, and the artillery wheels. Whew. We did, however, decide to geek out and color match the LED for the gauges uh, in that same blue. Normally, something I wouldn't do, but in this case, it works out quite nice. Body condition on this truck is super, super good. We didn't have to patch anything. We didn't have to fake any patina. This truck was just super, super solid, which is a dash since we were not repainting it and messing things around. We left a configuration where to the right of the speedometer, you have fan, vent, and temp. The wood in the bed, we decided not to age it and patina it. Frankly, when we got the raw planks, they were just so spotless that we decided to go with that. We equipped, fully certified. 
that's got a five-year 50k warranty from our buddies at GM um, wideband O2s catalytic converters fuel injection about 440 horsey torquey uh, power in this case is being sent through to another manual We're doing a bunch of manuals a lot more lately We've delivered uh, almost 20 of these and we got a whole bunch more in line yet to be built. So I think it's going to be kind of fun for you to see again the evolution of Icon. The fact that we're constantly thinking and, and trying to improve and evolve. Like, come on, look at those brakes. Who else has a 1947 truck with that caliber of brakes? And the suspension, give me a break here. Look at that independent rear suspension, Dana 60 Nodula. Whatever, I'm being a goober. But anyway, I thought this would be kind of fun. Um, there's so many things that we've developed, like you know, our, our new electrical system for them is truly groundbreaking and pioneering. This level of componentry and quality kind of doesn't exist uh, at uh, our level of the automotive space, and it's a good example of how we've continued to just try and evolve and pioneer and improve and grow and go. So, so there you go. That's all of the Icon Thriftmasters built up to today. Now, currently, we have four more in production. We have 11 more sold waiting their turn. But uh, thanks for coming along and uh, seeing how we've changed and grown. Something new you want to see in the Thriftmaster? Any crazy ideas we haven't thought of that you have? We are thinking about electrifying them, so count on that coming in the near future. But uh, we'd love your thoughts and feedback. As always, we will say thank you for your time and your support. Be kind to yourself, be kind to others, be good to the planet. See ya.